I was trying to think of something funny to do to kind of lighten stuff up. And uh, I realized that I don't have anything that's funny that isn't chock full of profanity. <laughs> Not <at all>. um, <laughs> But I have this, which is conceptually funny, maybe. <laughs> um, I was asked earlier tonight if I was single, and the answer is yes, ladies, but I'm not interested. <laughs> um, but uh, this is a poem about Did you one just of... come up with that? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, so uh, this is a poem about one of my last relationships which ended really well. The second best part about sleeping with 20 year olds is that they can't follow you into the bar when you have to drink away the shame of sleeping with someone who wasn't even born when you got your driver's license. The best part is occasionally the sex, but more often how you imagine the sex will be the first time they take their clothes off in front of you. The third best part. There is no third best part about sleeping with 20 year olds. <laughs> the joy of 20 year old sex is that you're not doing it right. The only joy of 34 year old sex is knowing precisely what you like and how to ask for it. But there is no one between the ages of 24 and 57 who finds me attractive, except for this 40-year-old who emails me via the dating site with advertisements for hazing-themed sex videos. I do not know he is 40 when he invites me out for drinks, because his profile picture is from the Bush administration. <laughs> <laughs> the first Bush administration. The George H.W. Bush administration. His flannel shirt is from the Cobain years. He pronounces, bruh, like it was built to support his newly minted man boobs. <laughs> he desires like he is 19, but he has sex like he died in the womb. The next man who kisses me is exactly half his age. He kisses like he knows my last name and wants to make it his. He rehems my clothes until they fit him better than me. I am a thrift store jacket. Nothing anyone would mistake for new or fashionable, but I might look wearable with a proper application of scissors. When we, and this is no surprise to either of us, break up. I put on a pair of pants he didn't care enough to reclaim. And they fit. But I look like an idiot. Is this how he looked on me when we rested against each other on the subway? When he buttoned his tongue between my lips in the grocery store? Is this why we never took photographs? For the third time in three weeks, the Friday night manager of Liquor Basement in Alston, Massachusetts asked me for a bathroom graffiti backstory. My ID looks exactly like me, arguably 17. The barcode scans perfectly like a line of postmodern Polish poetry. The holograph flickers in and then out of reality like a sense of self formed from memory. Dave as it says on his name tag, really believes in me. He says, just tell him a story. He says, just make it conceivable, and he won't tell anybody. There is a comfort in someone keeping your secret behind a counter, even when the secret is you are 22 and have no idea what you are doing. Even when the secret is that you have been spending your money legally, if irresponsibly at this incontrovertible fact of a store for six straight months. Who am I, Dave? I think I've forgotten, like an ex's birthday. Dave, who 
am I? I live in a dark hallway between Harvard Square and wherever I don't feel lonely. I've screwed up so many things this year. The long line of angry faces outside my apartment keeps getting confused for the Department of Motor Vehicles. I'm not scared of dying alone, but living that way terrifies me. My horoscope just says, Leo, you get everything you want. Eventually. <laughs> Why is it never enough? Have you ever considered wanting more? Dave, I am the idiot savant of want. I want like a child who wants a language to express desire. Desire is my only object permanence. Present even when I close my eyes. Object permanence is like a college degree. I feel like I should have it by now. Now is an unprotected U-turn on the road to Damascus. Now is the existential crisis that brings me here. Here, Dave, I am 22. I try so hard at everything. I think it's the secret to looking this young. I have a job, a car, an apartment, an internship, and a boyfriend or a girlfriend, but I feel like I spend most of my time inside Dunkin' Donuts, wedding paper napkins with ice coffee condensation, and sticking them against my face, pretending to be a ghost. I don't know, Dave. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like my whole life is an elaborate lie, constructed on the spot to prove that I exist. Sometimes I fear my dark secret is I am exactly who I appear to be. Look, Dave, I want to be real. Like, look at my license. I want to be this real. Real like a holograph. Look at the ghost of what I can be when the light hits me. Just right. So, um, in... I hate it. <laughs> Alright, weird. I'm gonna end with weird. Oh, well. Uh, this is weird, and Bobby hasn't heard it before. It's it's okay. The penguin's gonna be okay, everyone. The penguin <laughs> Thank is safe. You. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm the bartender at the Cantab Lounge in Cambridge, which holds a poetry slam, and I really like to write poems during the open mic while also working because I find it to be a huge challenge, and uh, I often end up writing the same poems over and over again. And I'm not just checking this prof profanity, but maybe a little bit. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, hmm. But this is a poem, I'll edit it out on the fly. This will be the radio edit of my weird poem uh, that I wrote a month or so ago, maybe two months at the Cantab, and have not looked at since. Uh, I don't know where it came from other than possibly the hot aquawo which is a drink made with fireball whiskey and Magner cider. Yeah. Which I recommend to anyone ever. <laughs> a bullfrog flew the moon into my shirt pocket when I was born. Slow, glowing heartbeat. When I turned 11 and my voice went walkabout, my mother tried to convince me that the frog had climbed into my throat. Her eyes kaleidoscopes pretending telescope. Faulty stethoscope ears, where my voice echoed back, needs no atlasing. My body didn't extend like a metaphor, but I keep footnoting my youth like someone's gonna major in my autobiography. Cliff notes for the autobiography of a swallowed frog pilot crash-landed in a fictional pocket. Screw rabbits. Trees are infinite ladders of gin-smelling future napkins. So much mud. Four years saving fly corpses until they fluttered into a spaceship. Screw gravity. Navigating around bovine gymnasts and fiddling cats. I caught the moon bobbing in the wake. Moon as handkerchief. Moon as party dress. Moon as moon as moon. An unfamiliar galaxy. There are so many moons in the universe. The frog's moon wasn't local. You haven't seen it yet. Frogs in throats are myths. They settle in livers. Moons confused for planets. Frogs for hearts. 
rabbits for libido. Screw the moon. The frog's greatest achievement was beating Super Mario Brothers 3 in 15 minutes. My voice's greatest achievement was a three-month vacation in a stranger's ear, the only part of our bodies we ever had to share. A bullfrog flew my ex's shirt into an, another ex's closet. It didn't fit either of them anyway. The bullfrog hits eject, like a space bar on an old typewriter. Screw my mouth. Galaxy of awkward images. Uvula. Echo uvula. Unreliable promise. Echo uvula. Good intentions. Uvula. Mint-flavored swamp water. Lips. Frog legs. Screw the word screw. Ribbit. Screw achievements. If the man and the moon is a heart, there is too much bullfrog in it. I've never not known where my voice is. The myth of my heart as a satellite is a lie. Check the footnotes. Uvula. When I woke up in the next morning, my mouth was a swamp with one less metronome. I give every friend who is going to leave Boston the same goodbye tour of my city. I lie. Here, I say, is the Boston Public Library, where I once met Uma Thurman and Noam Chomsky in the rare book section. They live in Jamaica Plain. We had a three-way staring contest at the public garden by the Make Way for Duckling statues. I, unsurprisingly, won. Here, yes, this is the best place for pizza. Here is the oldest vending machine in the North End, and therefore, all of America. John Adams and Paul Henry got Gatorade here to crush their raging hangovers after the Boston Molassacre. The Boston Molassacre, as you know, children, was in 1929. <laughs> 1929 when the Red Sox lost the American League pennant to the Orioles so thoroughly they doused the entire town in sugar and shame. <laughs> Speaking of shame, Alston <coughs> is technically in Brighton. Brighton is in Brookline, which is the city of Boston, except for Alston, which is a city in its own right. The address is 1134 Harvard Yard, the People's Republic of Somerville, Massachusetts, zip code 1776. You can walk the Freedom Trail around it. In a town that sells freedom as its history, I feel obliged to also give bad directions. The best way to get to Fenway Station is to get off at Fenway Station. I even take people to the Dunkin' Donuts downtown with a line that looks and moves like the spine of a slow loris. I give every lover the same tour of my city apartment. The world famous Kitar playing bear. This is the second time he has showed up in a poem tonight. His name is just Kitar Bear. The world famous Kitar playing bear was born in this very two bedroom living space, which I now occupy, converted into a three bedroom unit for financial purposes. We're the washer and dryer in the building. It's an eight minute walk from the T station, an eight minute walk from MIT, an eight minute walk from Roxbury, an eight minute walk from free parking. An eight-minute walk from New York City. It's only $800 a month. Only $650 a month. Loving me is only $425 a month. Utilities included. The first person who even as much looks at the moon has to sleep outside. This is how we talk to those we love. Show someone our home. Try to convince them it can be home for them too. To determine if you are in love with the city of Boston, there are only two questions you need to ask yourself. One, are you happy? Two, will you be sad? Welcome to Boston. No one can afford to live here. I lie about this town because everyone who figures out the truth leaves me for a bigger lie or for a better public transit system. I lie because this is what I want love to be. Someone to take my hand and show me all the things I should remember. Everything I seem to have been making up the whole time. already has a marshmallow in his mouth. He's earned it. <laughs> he finished his last poem. He's drinking some for the rest of us. And him out. Uh, I would just like to take this moment on behalf of WPAA and words at Studio W to thank uh, the gentleman poets Adam Stone you. and Bobby Crawford for sitting in these Woo! lovely Victorian-esque chairs, talking with large words to each other and possibly at the cameras and those behind them for the last 90 minutes or so and keeping it 
Swear free mostly. I'm very proud of you. You yeah. you've edited yourself. Oh yeah. It's, yeah. This is the first time since I was 12 I've never heard Adam swear for a long period of time in a row. The first um, time since I was 12 yeah, I haven't sworn for an hour and a half. Ever since he had facial hair, he's been dropping F-bombs. And luckily in about nine minutes, we're going to see a few of those bombs being dropped. But you guys get to relax and enjoy the rest of the show because our absurd intermission of Hulk Hogan, Wolverine, and company are going to come back yes. and give us a... They're going to play us off the stage, I think. All right. And we're going to right. go off the stage as they, as they play as, as long as they want and for as much time as they All right. we can. Thank you. Yeah, brother. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like your, this is like uh, we dry our car with this thing. Oh, yeah. It's a, uh, a shammy. Shammy. Yeah. Sham wow. It's actually yeah. yeah. a sham wow. It's a sham wow shirt. I love that. That's right. Uh, we Good still job, have this uh, painting here. This Good painting job. is now up to uh, $580. Uh, it's an auction, so uh, throw your uh, throw your bid down. Help us pay for that floor.